Hi, thanks for uh, pressing play. Uh, it's probably been eight months since the start of, uh, of lockdown. It's a long time without those face-to-face -to -face touch points. Um, certainly a lot going on out there. Certainly a lot going on uh, in here in the business. Um, lots of changes in almost every walk of life that we look at. Lots of learnings at the same time. Um, I guess real huge polarity between um, businesses that are doing well and, and sadly businesses that have almost had the, the, the tap turned off for them. A huge polarity between people who are having actually quite a good time uh, through lockdown, enjoying working from home, better family times, uh, less commuting, embracing tech, uh, and other families where from either a health or personal financial perspective, you know, really, really having a, a tough time out there. Um, really is difficult and, and, and hearts go out to them. Tough couple of months ahead yet still, um, Brexit on the horizon. Um, but at the same time, talking about the horizon, uh, the vaccination news uh, has been really warmly welcomed. Uh, something that can help us through the end, uh, hopefully, of COVID. So this was just an opportunity really to um, share with you, uh, keep you up to speed on what's been happening uh, inside Boost and also what we've got ahead on the horizon for ourselves. As we know, we've all had... Um, so much to digest in in such a short space of time. As a, as a business, um, we were embracing tech and we're already starting to think about flexible working at the back end of uh, 2019. So we, we kind of moved to uh, working from home principles uh, before COVID. Um, very much the focus has been on uh, staying safe first and foremost, learning to work uh, alone, and also having to manage that challenge of having your uh, your family space, I guess, invaded. Um, been hugely proud, pretty inspired, uh, if I'm honest, not just with our business, uh, but with others too, about really how the world has um, almost adapted and, and embraced new ways of working. Uh, for ourselves at Boost, we've been really created on a on a personal and a on a professional level in terms of the way that we that we have contact with each other, whether it be team meetings, uh, business briefings, departmental huddles, social events. Um, yeah, we've uh, we've done them all. Um, I've been trying to embrace tech that a little bit more, a bit like with this uh, video, uh, sending out you know messages internally and externally. Uh, the internal ones have been focused very much on uh, how we get through this very very challenging situation. Thinking about things like uh, mental health, thinking about leadership, sharing, um, reading recommendations. Uh, it's also been a really interesting time to reflect, um, to reset in parts, uh, but also a time to um, improve uh, and, and enjoy that, that, that mindset for, for growth and continuous learning. I've actually spent a bit of time mentoring with uh, some other SME bosses. So, you know, for all of us in the business, uh, while there certainly isn't circumstances that uh, anyone uh, would have wanted or wished for, but strangely, it seems to be a time that while we've been further apart, we've actually got closer together. Clearly, nobody knew um, back in March what the whole supply chain landscape was going to look like. Um, but the first thing we had to do um, to protect the brand and to protect uh, all of our partners in the chain was to contact the supply base uh, and, and hats off to them. They have worked tirelessly to fulfill demand, whether that comes to manufacturing products, uh, picking orders, having drivers for, for vehicles. Um, the same checks, by the way, uh, have been done uh, on the chain uh, to prepare us for Brexit. Uh, and I'm pleased to report that, you know, we are in great shape going into that. So uh, it's a significant thank you to everyone, really, uh, for their commitment to continuing to, to build a Boost brand with us. Um, I think to some degree, while it's been challenging and complicated on the, I guess, the input side of the business and manufacturing, to some degree, things have been kind of similar. I think when it comes to the uh, customer base and the wholesale sector, I think the, the working from home, the move to online, the embracing digital, becoming so central to our uh, strategies uh, has been quite incredible. Um, 
our sales team, uh, I guess, who are so used to being out on the road right across the UK, being face to face with people almost every day of the week. Um, this must be uh, for the part of the chain where I think the, the most change has probably come, possibly the most frustration, some definitely some great bits to take forwards. But that feeling, I guess, of like uh, being locked away, but like a caged hen, they're, they're itching to do their thing. Um, at the same time, uh, since lockdown has eased somewhat, I think it's been amazing how the depots and the connectivity between the sales team, the marketing team and the customer base uh, has really uh, strengthened, has really kicked on. Uh, so delighted how everybody has pulled together there. I think what we've seen in terms of the innovative approaches under the most immense pressure in the food service sector, I think just has to be applauded. Um, the way they've pivoted their businesses um, almost with little choice uh, some of the direct to consumer uh, modeling that we're seeing now uh, really is really is quite incredible and testament to them and uh, i guess the final piece is is about the independent retailers um hailed as the uh, the community heroes i mean we know we have a very strong relationship and uh, you know we pride ourselves on our service to the channel but those guys and girls really have gone over and above uh, serving the community extra hours the investment into safety in store uh, it really is uh, a tribute and just really shows the uh, the end-to-end -end resilience of the supply chain that we work within. And a, and a great well done and thank you to all. Regarding performance, I think it's fair to say we have followed the trends of, uh, of COVID. So we saw the, uh, in March time, the early uncertainty and the panic buying. Uh, since then, uh, convenience has clearly been uh, a winning part of the marketplace. Uh, shopping local, very much being on the agenda, supporting communities, greater degrees of empathy. Uh, we've seen uh, footfall down in major city centres. Um, basket spend has been up, uh, albeit there has been a greater move also to online. Um, we've seen on a, on a trading level, Pattern slightly down versus last year, but I guess that's that's probably in line with with reduced footfall. And this has certainly been uh, closer to normality since um, restrictions eased in June. We uh, we managed to launch uh, our iced coffee, uh, as you can see behind me, uh, at the start of lockdown. Uh, results really have uh, exceeded expectations. Uh, the execution was was really timely uh, ahead of the March lockdown. Uh, and I think it's really emphasised, you know, what a great opportunity that there is for the for the category. I think it also demonstrates clearly uh, how our brand uh, has great stretch to, to meet changing consumer needs. Uh, as you can also see behind me, we have pushed on with our brand repositioning, updated the, the packs. Everything's looking, you know, a lot more uh, aspirational. Uh, it was delayed. It was meant to come to market um, probably about April-ish time, but naturally with, with footfall dropping and rate of sale dropping off, we have packaging to run through. That's been in the market since uh, back end of May, early June now. Initial feedback across the trade has been, has been really fantastic. And uh, we've launched our biggest uh, consumer brand campaign, a brand called Choose Now, uh, which is really, again, part of the aspirational repositioning move on the back of, you know, significant in, um, insight, uh, investment, better understanding of the of the Boo shopper. Uh, the marketing team have had some uh, some challenges with our with our TV ad, trying to produce this under uh, COVID safe rules, which which they did. Uh, which was a great testament to them also in, in hugely difficult weather conditions, if I remember rightly. Uh, and the continued commitment to um, independent retailers ha has absolutely been at the uh, the front of all of our planning. Um, you know, our COVID response planning covered um, about 1,500 care packs uh, that went out to the trade, which was point of sale. It was COVID signage. It was gifts for staff to, to say thank you for all their efforts along with uh, about 180,000 uh, samples across the range uh, that were really a thank you uh, and hopefully a, a pick-me-up uh, to all the, uh, the great, great work being done by uh, NHS staff and all key workers. So our leadership team met uh, socially distanced, of course, and outdoors. 
uh, in July to start the exciting uh, process that we enjoy each year of strategy planning for 2021 and beyond, uh, thinking about everything to do with our brand and our people. Um, while we all crave certainty, uh, naturally none of us uh, knew and still don't know for sure what's coming. Uh, we know that uh, the next couple of months, the start of 2021, uh, is going to have some, some challenges, uh, clearly managing through the end of hopefully uh, the pandemic, also uh, hurdling whatever Brexit finally brings us. But with our, with our momentum, with the ambitious plans we've got, uh, with the vaccination uh, on the horizon, uh, and also, I guess, the, the flight to value, uh, the space that we're playing in uh, gives us great hope uh, for the future. Uh, I think it's fair to say that the, the strong culture that we have both internally and externally, uh, along with uh, exceptional uh, relationships, uh, I think really will uh, put us in great stead to um, execute the plans that we've got. Uh, clearly, it's going to need uh, resilience, uh, agility, uh, creativity, uh, and working together you know, to, to, to get us through. Uh, we've been investing in people. So we've uh, been recruiting a category controller, a senior brand manager, uh, a new HR partner, uh, and also a new international controller. So uh, clearly a sign of, uh, of things to come. Um, really excited for the team to share in the next few weeks uh, all the exciting NPD opportunities, the brand campaigns, uh, a new CSR program, and also our, our plans for overseas. Um, clearly our, our ways of working uh, as for all of us, have changed. And I think we all know that we we'll, won't be going back to what we used to know uh, as normal. Uh, we're currently open uh, two days a week, but really with, uh, with, with, with sort of skeleton staff, just to allow uh, for some distance, face-to-face uh, -face work where needed on, on big projects. Uh, and also to support people who uh, may be living alone and feeling um, naturally uh, isolated. Um, so yeah, exciting times ahead. Um, thank you again uh, for clicking on today. Uh, also, thank you uh, to all of my team and to all of our partners right through the chain for uh, a monumental effort, you know, through COVID. Uh, 2020 uh, certainly is a year that lots of us will want to put behind us. Uh, at the same time, a year where we can take uh, some new learnings and take all the best bits forwards. Um, stay safe, look after yourselves. Um, please get in contact should you want to uh, touch base anything I've talked through today uh, and look forward to hopefully seeing you face to face somewhere very soon. All the best.